Hey y'all, Grandma Rose here. Happy New Year. Are you ready to start knitting a pair of socks? Well, let me show you what I'm going to do. And I actually recorded a video the other day with me selecting the yarn that I was going to use. Did a pretty much of a survey of the four or five cubbies on my wall that I have my fingering weight yarn, my sock weight yarn. And it took a long time. I don't know if I'm go actually going to publish or not, but I might. But let me show you what I actually decided to use. And the reason why I decided to use this, this yarn. Now, you may decide to use the yarn that you have simply because you liked it and that's the only fingering weight yarn you have. But if you've seen any inkling of the kind of yarn that I have, then you know that I have a lot. And I decided, thinking about this is the first part of the year, and how long is it going to take to knit these socks, and what can I do? I want to have a special pair of socks for an event, for a holiday, for something. And I thought, well, Valentine's socks would be good because February 14th, middle of February, that's a, that'll give us six weeks to finish something. Well, some of you are beginner knitters, and it might take you longer than six weeks to finish. So I started started thinking, what about Mardi Gras? Mardi Gras is a little bit later. I think was Ash Wednesday is like the first week in March. So that'll give us a couple of weeks longer to knit a pair of socks. So I'm doing Mardi Gras socks. And if you're familiar with Mardi Gras, the colors for Mardi Gras green and purple and gold. Here's my Mardi Gras socks. So I'm going to do the cuff. I'm going to cast on with the gold yarn. Put this to the side. I'll cast on with the gold yarn and I'll do ribbing in the gold yarn. And then after I finish my ribbing I will put on the green and purple and then I will knit the leg of the sock. And Then when I get down to the heel I'll put the gold back on and knit a heel knit a heel, and then finish the heel, put that back on again, knit the foot, put that back on for the toe. It's not going to be a big deal, and you'll learn something if you've never used two different colors of yarn, or changed yarn in, in the middle of, of working on something. This is a good idea, so that'll teach you something else besides just how to knit socks. Showing you how to knit socks with a, with a different color cuff cuff, heel, and toe. So let's get started. Now I put a video up the other day, yesterday I guess it was. If you're watching this later on, it probably wasn't yesterday. However, for me it was. It was yesterday. And I'm going to use this gold yarn. I'm going to use the long tail cast on. And I'm going to cast on 64 stitches. There's a reason behind that. My foot is a little bit bigger, it's about eight and a half inches in circumference. And you want your socks to be a little bit smaller than your foot. Not a lot, an inch, half inch to an inch smaller to make them fit snugly. I may have mentioned, and I don't know if I did or not on this video, but I had a problem, uh, hard under the previous video, I had a problem with my socks feeling like they fit fine. They were the right length. And they fit great, they felt good, but if I slept in them, they twisted around on the top of my foot. And I discovered that if I went down a needle size, then I would, they fit better. That made them a little bit smaller than the circumference of my foot. A little bit smaller, and that's what you want, just to be a little bit snug, not tight. You don't want them strangling your foot, but you do want them to be a little snug. So you want the circumference of your socks to be just a little bit smaller than the circumference of your foot. So here we go. So I'm going to cast on 64 stitches, which will give me, at a, at a gauge of eight, stitch, 8 stitches per inch, an 8 inch circumference. Now on size 0 needles, that's going to be a little bit smaller. Not a lot smaller, not as much as 7 stitches, or 7 inches, like the 56 stitches would. And this pattern that we're doing, the Vanilla Latte Socks, is written so you can knit your socks either on 56 stitches, 64 stitches, or 72 stitches. So that would make a 7 inch, 8 inch, or 9 inch circumference on the sock. 
but I want them a little bit tighter so I'm doing on size 0 needles and not size 1 needles and they fit me so what I need to do I know that it's going to take me a little over a yard of, of the yarn as the long tail to make it so I'm just going to take the length like you do you know you stretch out your hand and touch, you touch your nose turn your head back around to the left side if you're right handed touch your nose and then I'm going to do about half that much again to give me the right amount of yarn and we'll find out how, how close I am I would rather have too much than not enough and I've got plenty of yarn so I'm not worried about, about running out so let's do that and you probably won't see me doing this. Well, maybe. You'll see the yarn being stretched out, but you won't see me touching my nose. Here. So there's one yard. And there's, oops. There's two yards. So I'm going to bring it in about halfway in the two yards. So that'll give me just about the, about the right amount. Bring the tail over to the left side, like I showed you the other day. I'm going to cast on 64 stitches. I'm going to cast on on my circular needles. This, like I said, is a size 0, 32 inch circular needle. You see this. Here's the tips over here in my left hand. Here's the other end of the cable over here in my right hand. Against, this, against the table, they're blue. The cable is blue. The brand of this, this is, if you want to get needles like this, these are higher, higher. H-I-Y-A, H-I-Y-A. I think they're Haya Haya Sharps. I'm not sure. You can get them on Amazon. And I would rec... Goodness, I heard a chicken. Did you hear that? The rooster. He's out on the front porch because it's raining and they're in the, on the front porch. Okay, so let's get started on this. I'm going to use one end of this needle and cast on 64 stitches. And then I'll show you what we do. So we cast on here. I'm not going to do it slow. I'm, I've already shown you how to how to do this, how to do the cast on. Oops, that didn't right. That's not right. Okay, let me take one of those off because I messed up. There we go. And you do. Every now and then you mess up. Crazy chickens. The roosters are crowing on my front porch because it's, it's raining. We have a bad thunderstorm warning right now. In fact, we're under a tornado watch. A tornado, tornado watch, not a tornado warning, but just to be looking out for one. The conditions are right to have a tornado until 7 o'clock tonight. So the light is not great, but I'm sitting here at my kitchen table, and I've got windows on two sides of me and the light on overhead, and I'm hoping you're not getting a shadow like we did last night. That was because it was last night at night time, and I had the lights on, and it was casting a shadow. I did not like the way that was looking, but it is what it is, and I couldn't help it, and I didn't have time to do it over again. So I let that go, and I'm try to do better than that the next time. Hope you enjoy the roosters. They're a little annoying, but I'm used to them. It's sort of like if you're a if you're a mother, you can tune out your crying baby. Now, when your baby's you try to get the baby to go to sleep and it's crying and you have to leave it alone because it's not good to to get in there. They have to learn how to to go to sleep by themselves and it's it's hard. Same kind of thing with the roosters. I get where I've, I've tuned them out and I don't hear them, and I'm sure you do hear them. So I'm continuing to cast on. That's my weather warning. Severe thunderstorm warning today. I'm not 
turning that sound off. I, I apologize if that comes back on. I need that. That's my weather alert. See how fast this goes when you when you get into the rhythm of it? It's it doesn't take very long to to cast these on. You would think it would. I feel like I've got I'm getting there. Let me count and see how many stitches I've got got on here right now. I'm probably close. Let me count to myself. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, about this, 50, 55, 62. I told you I was getting close. Done this enough that I can feel it. It felt felt right. So I need 64 stitches. Now what I need here, we're going to have knit it, have stitches for the front of the sock and stitches for the back of the sock. So what I'm going to do now that I've got these stitches on the needle, I'm going to move them over onto the cable like that. Now all of the stitches are on the cable. And if you notice, some of them are turned in one direction, some of them are turned the other direction. We're going to get them all going in the same direction, like that. We're going to do this again, too. I'm going to count 32 stitches. So let's let me do by twos this time, easier. Two, four, six, sixteen, there's 32 stitches right there. So what I'm going to do here at 32 stitches right here, bend the yarn or bend the cable and it'll make a loop and then pull it up like that. And now you've got 32 stitches on one side and 32 stitches on the other side. Now, the yarn, the end of the yarn that you began on is always on the right side or in the right side in the back. So if I turned it this way, it's going to be on the right side on the front. I want it to be in the back because I'm going to start knitting on these front needles. And what we want is this, the middle part of the stitches right here. The loops are on the cable. Do you see this? Can you tell that? The loops are on the cable. We want the loops down here to be on the cable too. We want them to be twisted in the right direction. So I'm going to put them, both of these on the needle tip so you can see better. So just push, push, push until they go up on the metal. And again here, push till they go back on the metal. And you can see, see how, how twisted they look? You want them all to be going in the same direction. No twist in them. If you make a twist, it's, you're going to have to start over again. Now there is a method to doing this. Now. This, this is the back of the yarn. This is where we're going to start. We want to be able to start on the, the yarn that's connected to the ball. Not this tail. We want the tail back over here on the other side. Because we're not going to knit with that. Now, this yarn is straight. Let's get that tail out of the way. Now, I'm going to take this, the back, the back needle I'm going to leave the stitches on the top, just like that, and they're straight. You see that? Can you tell? This is very important. And if you can't tell, can you zoom in? You know what I'm going to do? I will zoom in on the, on the when, I re, when I edit the video, I will zoom in on this so you can see what, what I'm doing. Because this is extremely important for your stitches to stay straight on the needle. If it's twisted, it's not going to work, and like I said, you'll have to start over again. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull, leave the top stitches on the needle, and like they're lined up exactly like that. Put your thumb on them holding, them, holding them tight so they don't move. And then, 
move that down near the tip because you're going to be knitting on, on this one and pull that tip out like that just like that and it leaves a loop on that side see that now I still have my thumb on top of both of these threads on the top and on the bottom give me some slack yarn back here now pick up this cable okay the yarn needs to be in the back side now this is the tail we're not going to knit with that tail the yarn is back here in the back because we're going to knit first now do you know how to knit and knit and to purl if you don't ha know how to knit and purl before we get started you need to go back and refresh yourself on how to knit and how to purl I will put up a video on that on that I'll show you how to do that but that's not going to help you right now if you want to cast on right this minute with me you need to already know how to knit and purl and if you don't know then pause the video cut it off and come back to it after you have taught yourself how to knit and purl or reminded yourself how to do it I will show you slowly on this just in case you haven't you haven't done this in a while but if you've ever if you've ever knitted before and you've ever knitted and you've ever purled you're going to remember very quickly it's like riding a bicycle it'll come back to you so grab the needle tip and we're going to knit with this needle tip using this needle tip it's exactly like knitting with two straight needles they just happen to be connected with the cable you're still just knitting with the tips and I'll show you what to do with with those stitches in a few minutes so come here from the left to the right come in from the left side of the stitch to the back of the stitch to the right and it's going to make an X what I'm going to do before I do that I'm going to bend this cable around to the front and hold it down with my thumb along with that other now put in and that's going to make it tight on that needle knit one knit a second one now bring the yarn to the front and purl one purl two remember the purl goes from the the front the threads in the front and you go from the right to the left and the knit the threads in the back and you go from the left to the right and back to the back to the knitting we're going to put the thread back in the back push the stitches stitches back down toward the tip of the needle it makes it easier you don't pull out long lengths of yarn when you do this when they're closer to the tip and as long as you're not pulling on them it's not going to come off you're, I had to keep my finger back here behind it holding it in place with my thumb and my finger like that and then put the yarn around it and bring the loop out and knit one do it the second time about and knit two do the same thing with the purl from the right to the left across the front purl one purl two And continue knitting and purling. I don't need to keep saying knit two, purl two. This is knit. You see what I'm doing? When I bring the yarn to the front, you're going to know I'm purling. And you'll see me pull the put the yarn back to the back, and you'll know I'm knitting. So this is ribbing. This is how you knit ribbing. It's it's like this is a two by two ribbing that I'm doing. And you can do other different one by one, two by two, three by one. There's other ways to do knitting, but then you need to keep them and keep them in order. Otherwise, it won't. They won't pull, and they won't. They won't tighten up on your foot like they're supposed to. There you go. Have your a sleeve cuff or the bottom of your sweater or whatever you want ribbing on it. It keeps it from curling, and it helps it stay up. Now, if you haven't knit before, or it's been a long time before you, since you've knitted, it might be a good idea to go back and just take some yarn and some needles and practice. And when you feel like you've gotten the swing of it, got the hang of it again, then come back and do this. Your yarn's not going anywhere. The project's not going anywhere. Okay. 
Getting to the end of this, and I'm going to be turning it in a minute. You know what? I don't have the right number of stitches on here. Let's see what I've done. Let me continue back to the to the back. I should have four stitches left, and I only have three. So let me see what I've done. I may not have put enough stitches on, and if that's the case, I can just take one from the back side to the front. So here's knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, 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 two. I think what I did is I didn't put enough stitches on here. So I've got one purl stitch here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this out like that, stretch it out, and then I'm going to add this, another stitch to it. Okay, I had not intended to show you how to do that, but you know, it's not going to hurt to learn. There you go. So now I have two stitches left on here. And I'm going to purl these last two stitches. There we go. Purl those last two stitches. I'm going to turn the yarn around. I'm going to be sure this is not twisted. Remember that. It's very important that that is not twisted. Because if it is, in trouble. So what we're going to do here, there we go. Now there's the yarn in the back still. Push this cable back through here. Put the stitches on here. Pull on it. I'm pulling on it from the back side here. Do that. And then I'm going to push these stitches on here. Now I'm going to pull out this one that's in the back and I'll be knitting with that one. So let's get these back to the front like that. I'm going to be knitting with this this needle. Bring it to the front like this. Be sure I've got these straight. I don't want these messed up. Okay. And I'm going to hold that hold that cable down just for a few minutes. So what I'm doing, whoops, let's get that yarn back to the back. It wasn't in the right, right place. There we go. So now the yarn is in the back of the needle. See that? That's where it's supposed to be. And what I have done, if you look at this, when I'm holding this down, essentially what I'm doing is I'm just continuing this along where the stitches are lined up the same way. And that keeps from having a gap here when you knit. But otherwise you have to pull, 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 pull really tight right there where you change the needles. And sometimes you still end up getting a gap. So we'll pull a little bit more on this. We have it pulled up to give you a little bit more length on the, on the needle. And still have this loop at the back on that side. See that? The loop's still over there. Now I'm going to take this needle and I'm going to continue knit two purl two. Let's do this. Knit two, purl two. When I finish that, then I will, I, I can let go of that, that cord, or that cable. There you go. I can let go of that now. Because the stitches are already on there. And if you see, they're going to be, they're lined up, they're not going to, there's not going to be a gap in there when you finish it. That's really the hardest thing for me when I learned to do this, was I would have loose, a loose spot between where I changed my two needles. Did the same thing doing using double pointed needles. So there's the knit two, purl two. I'm going to go back to knit two. And the knit two, purl two all the way across. We'll see what happens at the end. Hopefully I will have the right number of stitches on it. And if I don't, you will never know that I did this. I finished the round now at this point. We're back around to the beginning. 
And if I'm lucky, the twist, the stitches won't be twisted. So let's start here again. Let's look at them. Put them back on the tips so I can look at them carefully and be sure they're not twisted. If they are, then I'm going to start over again. Okay, these stitches are not twisted on the needle. Do you see that? Can you see? They're not twisted, so I did it right. So that's good. Now we just continue doing the same thing. So I've got, you don't have to put them back on the needle tips every time. I just did it this time just to prove to myself that I did not have twisted stitches. Because I didn't want to knit several rounds and then discover that they were twisted and I would have to start over again. It'd be a waste of time. But it's not a bad thing to do on the first couple of rounds when you're doing this. Just to check and to be sure that all your stitches are lined up like they're supposed to be. So they are. So we're going to do the same thing. The yarn is attached to the back needle. Again, you see that? We've got this tail on here. What I'm going to do, I don't want that long tail. I'm just going to break it. Pop it. Now I've got that piece left over. And now I've got a little bit of a tail down here on this end in the front. At the very end, I'm going to take a tapestry needle and I will sew this up at the top. It's called weaving in the ends, and you won't be able to tell where you started and stopped. So there's, there's my marker. I don't have to put a stitch marker on here now to tell me what is the beginning of my round. Because my, the beginning of my round is always going to have that tag end on it. So this is the same thing as a stitch marker for me. So let's do this again. Pull the stitches here. Let's pull out the back needle. Where those stitches that are on it are now on the cable. Pull that out. Make that loop smaller there at the back. You don't want to pull the loop out too far. You can put them back if you do, but it's, yeah, it's easier if you don't. Okay, so we're going to bring this around like I showed you before. Let's keep this yarn in the back. So it's going to go between these stitches and over, over that needle, out of the way, off the screen, as you saw, and then back to the back. We always want the knitting, the yarn and the knitting, to be at the back. The yarn and the purl is in the front. So again, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, all the way across. Let's find this first stitch. You know, now that I'm here, I want to show you something that you can do. Now this was something that one of one of the the knitting designers, knitwear designers, showed you could do at the very beginning to make it easier so your stitches don't pull out like that. See how that's doing a little bit? You've got a little bit of a, a loose a loose thread there. That's not going to be a problem at all. But what you can do at the very beginning, before you do that first round, you can swap stitches. You can take the stitch off the end here right there. Move it to the tip of your needle and swap that stitch back on the left needle. And then take the stitch on the left needle, like a crochet hook, a crochet hook would be easier, and take it, put it over that tip and then put it on the right needle. And that joins them together. I don't usually do that, but that is a method that you can do. Another thing that you can do is you can, when you cast on, instead of casting on 64 stitches or 56 stitches, 56 stitches, 64 stitches, whatever, how many you do, to do one more. So instead of 64 stitches, cast on 65 stitches, then move the last stitch over to the left needle, and then knit two together, and that'll join them. And that won't show either, and that's another method to do it. So there's three different ways that you can, you can join to knit in the round. You can either bring the tips together and start knitting, or you can swap out the stitches on the end, or you can knit or cast on an extra stitch, bring it over, and then knit those two together to join. All three are correct. There's no wrong way to do it. The right way to do it is not to have a big run or a big loose spot at the beginning. That, but that can be repaired if you do, so that's not a big deal, really. So let's, here we go. I'm going to bring this 
cable, like I said, I bring the cable to the front and just hold it for a minute. So that lines up those stitches right there at the tip. And you see that. See with this, this is the stitch on the left needle. These are the stitches that are on the back on the cable needle. On this, on the cable. Here's the needle tip. So what I'm doing is I'm just holding those together so that when I knit, these two are going to be close together and it'll help hold it tight and your knitting is going to look nicer. And you only need to hold it for a couple of stitches then you can let go. And it's not a big deal. You've got to put your thumb here anyway to hold that in place. So why not hold the cable at the same time? I don't know that a lot of people... A lot of people don't do that. And look here, this is the tail and I almost knit with that tail. You see that? What I need to do... There's that. I almost knit with the wrong thing. There we go. Get that, get that right. Put it in the back. Keep this tail out of the way. Now I'm going to knit. be back when I get